Welcome to the Infinite Skills training series for Autodesk Inventor. In this training series, we're going to be looking at the basic core concepts of the Autodesk Inventor software. We're going to begin this by looking at the first load screen you get with the Autodesk Inventor tool, which is this welcome screen. This welcome screen will segregate you out into a work, learn, and extend area. Now, once you've gone through and we've understood this, you probably will never use this screen again, but it is nice to kind of see an introductory glance at what's here and kind of how to get around and what's available to you. So we'll start here with the work area, perhaps the most understandable to you right away, where you can start a new file. You can do an open to open an existing file that already exists on our computer or on our cloud server, wherever we're trying to access the files from. We also have a look at projects here, which is actually a really big topic. And we're going to touch on it very lightly here. And we're going to cover it a little bit more heavily in a later video. But for now, this look at projects here, we're just going to activate a certain project for this training course. Under recent files, this is where we can access files we recently had open to quickly launch into them. At the bottom, we have a configure default template. So if I start a new file from a default standard IPT, it's going to use inches. If I start a new drawing based on inches, it's going to grab an ANSI standard to begin with. Now, that doesn't mean I can't use millimeters, I can't use a German standard, I can't use an ISO standard. It just sets my defaults for my templates. I can still change the different settings, but these are my settings I'm going to stick with throughout the course as my basics. So I'm going to hit cancel here. In the next area under learn, you can take some time out if you want to do these on your own, but the essential skill videos, the interactive tutorials are very, very basic. So what we are going to go through in this training series is a lot more in depth than what you might see in these overviews or these fundamentals, as well as the interactive tutorials. That last portion there for interactive tutorials, it kind of helps you with the picks and clicks, you know, kind of your command sequence, if you will. But that's something that a lot of people can pick up on without the need for those. At the bottom with the more learning resources, you can also link over to a team collaborative page if you work in a large organization that might have created a team-based CAD portal, if you will. Otherwise, you can look at some more online learning resources from Autodesk. But again, pretty basic, not a lot of videos. So kind of step-by-step -step walkthrough without really telling you why you're doing it. And on the right side, we have Extend. So this is how you can extend the functionality of your software as well as the functionality of your storage options. So with the Autodesk Exchange, if I were to click on this link here, this takes me to a web page for the Autodesk Inventor App Store. Essentially, there's a lot of free apps in here. There's a lot of inexpensive apps. These are apps that are created by third parties to help enhance the software. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, why aren't these tools in there already? Well, if you put every tool that was here inside of an inventor, it would really bloat the programming for people that may only need to be using the tool occasionally or very niche type of need then it doesn't bloat the software for everybody else. So a lot of these tools are third-party tools. They're supported only by the third-party programmer, not by Autodesk, so just be aware of that. But they can help you enhance the software to do things that the core programming did not give you. On the Autodesk 360 link here, if I were to click that, that'll take you to a sign-in page for your 360 account. And what this is, if you haven't already investigated this with Autodesk, it's a free cloud storage service, very similar to Box.net or Dropbox, if you've ever used any of those tools. And if you're on subscription, you get a pretty large amount of storage. For every subscription user, I believe it's up to about 25 gigs now per user that you don't have to pay for because it's part of your subscription terms with Autodesk. Now, if you're not on subscription, you still get some free storage. It's just not as much. So a lot of people will use this to store files on the cloud for archival or backup sake. Or if they want to share something with somebody else, they can do it through here. If you want to access files on a tablet device, such as an iPad or an Android tablet, you can also use the cloud storage to access that on your mobile device. A lot of great enhancements here they've done over the last couple of years to this cloud-based system for the ability to be collaborative with your data. The optimization area down here is a professional module. So we're not covering professional modules here in this core concepts class. But just so you know what it is, it helps you offload an FEA analysis to the cloud so you can do a study while not bogging down your system. So now that we understand what's here through work, learn, and extend, this is probably the last time you want to look at this. So I'm going to go over here to the lower left and toggle off the display at startup button. 
by toggling that off, it's not going to pop up anymore. So I'll go ahead and hit close. And one of the first things we want to do for our interface, for our, our learning throughout this entire course, is to set our project file. We want to make sure that we're set into a certain cone of influence where it finds everything we want it to find. So I'm going to go up here to Projects on my Getting Started tab. Now my Infinite Skills project has already been set. Now this will be a file that will be included with your working files for the course. If it's not already here, you're going to have to go down to the bottom and click on Browse. From here, you should be able to find your working files directory. Locate this infinite skills.ipj. That's the extension for a project file. Once we have that selected, I'll just choose open and I'll make sure that that is set. I'm going to click done now. We'll get into project files more later. And now I just want to take a look at the new and open buttons. So if I were to click on new, I will see a list of my templates available to me. I have some standard ones in here. You probably are seeing the exact same type in your software. I have a special infinite skills IPT up here. Now, the only thing that's different about this one from the standard is I chose a little bit different color scheme so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing when I'm modeling. So pay no attention to that. It's really basically the same as the standard. If I look at English, there's specific English inch templates. If I look at metric, there's specific metric templates. So up here on this top button, these are my default ones. And that was controlled by that setting on my welcome screen for configuring my default template. So I said everything's going to be inch and ANSI by default. Now, notice there's no special extension for these. It's an IPT. That's actually an inventor part file. There's no special extension like there would be for like Microsoft Word or AutoCAD where they have special template extensions. Here, it's a certain folder that tells that folder is a series of templates. I'm going to hit cancel down here to get out of that screen. And if I click open, you'll see that'll take me to my working files here because that's where my project file told me to go. Now, if I get lost somewhere, like I go up to my C drive for some reason, or my desktop, whatever, if I click on Workspace over here in the upper left, that'll take me right back to where my working files are stored. So I don't have to go back and hunt to where I should be saving files, or where I should be opening files from. If I open up the Chapter 1 folder here, you can see that there's IPTs in here. These are my part files. I also have IAMs, and I also have DWGs for drawings. Now, as a word of wise, word to the warning, I guess you would say, don't save your files on a flash drive. Don't try to save them on a network server. When you start running into those problems, you work with latency issues, you work with writes and the ability to save a file fast to those different types of devices. Inventor is best utilized on a local system. And if you are working in a collaborative environment, you might have what's called the Autodesk Vault software, which allows you to do a check-in and check-out from a network storage location which is actually a free portion of the software. Okay, we're not going to cover that in depth here. This course is just for Inventor. It's not for data management. But just a word to the wise, be careful that you store things in a correct location to find your files. So I'm going to hit cancel here, get out of this screen. And I just want to point out to you that what I've been doing up here with new and open and projects is very similar to what you saw on the welcome screen. So that's why we really don't need it. So I have those buttons up here. I have the welcome screen if I want to relaunch that. I have that team web that I talked about. I have what's new. I have those videos and tutorials up here. I have the Audis 360 to launch the website for it. So a lot of what we saw on the welcome screen is duplicated. Now on this I button, this is our inventor application menu. If I were to click on that, it gives me a file menu type system here where I can do a new and open this way. I can also access my application options that control how the application operates. I can exit the software this way. Of course, you can always hit the big red X in the top up part of the screen there on that big red button. That also gets you out of the software. A lot of people, when they come in here, they might double click this button by mistake. Don't be that guy. So if I were to double click this button, it actually shuts down the software and it does the same thing inside the Microsoft Office products. So just be patient. If you have a slower machine, you know, click it once, wait for it to open, and then find what you need to find in here. You can also see that if I'm looking at this area on the right here, these are my recently used files. I can also do an open, see my open documents. I can also change this to show me the large or small icons or images of those files as well. So I got some images that I haven't updated there. That does happen from time to time. You also have a command search. 
So I can look for a certain command. I want to know where it is and how to use it. But that gives us our first basic look at the software here, how to set our working files up with our project, how to do news and how to do opens. That concludes our first video here about getting started with Autodesk Inventor.